Hello, today I've got a quick repair on an Alto TS310. I hope it's going to be quick because the symptoms are pretty classic. It's got no base. These has got all the controls on the back. This is actually, so it's at a 2000 watt amplifier. It'll be one of these class D switching ones. Very efficient. Let's plug some signals in and see how we go. I've got the signal generator set to sweep a signal going from a low frequency all the way to a high frequency. Let's turn it on and see what sound it makes. And no matter what you press on here, it makes no difference. Right, let's get this apart. Enough of that. <laughs> As usual, too many screws. Take longer getting the screws out than fixing it, probably. And look how long these screws are. That is ridiculous. <laughs> Bonkers. The last screw. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> just pulled the knob off. <laughs> it's supposed to come out. Oh, always a pain. Sometimes you have to tease this off a bit. Oh, that's not been too bad this time. Reveal all the electronics behind there. You have to cut these cable ties off here. Disconnect this LED. <laughs> oh, it's took the plug off. Ah, oh, the quality of these things. Oh, come out. Oh, we'll come back to that. The plug down in the amplifier, just pull that up. There we go. And we're free. To get any further into this, we need to take this amplifier module out. This is actually a 2000 watt amplifier. There's progress and miniaturization on that. Very light. Let's have a little nosy round. I'm just going to take this lid off just few screws. I'll say a few, still more than I'd like. There's one, there's two, there's three, one that come off. And around the other side. There we go. So this is the amplifier right from the top close up we got from this side the mains comes in here switch mode power supply rather nasty voltages on these caps comes through here this is your digital amps basically these chips here do the pulse width modulation to generate the the output now with all these class d amplifiers so they switch these transistors here i don't think there's any problems here i'll be very surprised but these chokes these coils here so you've got two amplifiers in here one for the high frequency and one for the low frequency and you can tell the low frequency side has got a bigger choke so it handle more current so this is where I think the trouble might be I do note it is gobbed up with lots of silicon around here so the manufacturers know that this is a risky part the bad news is to solder these <laughs> you know check the connections let's get this board out and we have to get all these screws out there's no shortcut yeah, it's going to break this sort of thread lock off. There we go. And not to forget the ones over here. They put plenty of it on, don't they? <laughs> Work, damn you. So 
rips this retaining spring off. You have to watch out for this. There's heat sink compound on the back of these transistors and all around the sides. You get it all over your fingers. It's right mucky, especially around here. They've gobbed it up near a little temperature sensor. <laughs> anyway, let's see if we've got any trouble at the back of this. Oh, that looks a bit dodgy. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. You can't see it moving if you wiggle it, this connection here. But there's a there's a line around it. If I look, yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm suspicious of that. I think that's a bit of a dodgy joint. I'm just going to touch that up with a soldering iron. Let the heat build up in there. Make sure it's got it nicely. I'm just going to do the other side whilst I'm in here. Okay, might as well do the other one. It's always a good idea to have a good general check all over with these things. Anything large in these, because you've got a big base speaker in there, it shakes everything. You get trouble anywhere, and the bigger the heavier the component, the worse it is. And don't forget the connectors. We'll see them alright. Looks okay from first glance anyway. We'll soon hope we put it back together. Before I put this back in, it's going to be worth checking the insulators on the heatsink. Just make sure these sort of rubber parts here are, you know, there's no holes in them or rips or tears. Because if these have got holes in, that will short the the middle connection of the transistor, you know, the, the drain on these MOSFETs, short it to the chassis and that's going to be bad news. That's going to be pretty much instant bang. Same here, these for switch mode power supply um, diodes. Just check that this capped on is not got holes in it. Yeah, we should be good. So what I'm going to do now is just put some fresh heatsink compound on on these. Squeeze it. It's mucky stuff, so I don't like putting much in. Oh, I've got a hair. Yep. Same there. Doesn't need a lot. I'm just going to use a pallet knife just to spread it round a bit. It's probably not necessary to be honest. Not cream cheese. Get out of position. Okay, that looks okay there. Right, start putting these screws back in. To hold the board in the right place. Right, 
And there's quite a lot of them. The one right in the middle. it all back in from there oh. <laughs> get it on properly that's better okay let's <coughs> see how she does we're just loosely assembling it now ready for a test just plug the speaker back in oh, speakers back in I don't need to worry about that yet Okay, we'll find some power. We've got our sweep oscillator in. We'll call that a full frequency sweep. Look at that. Happy as. It was the amp and not the actual driver itself, so that's <laughs> that's a cheaper fix. So I'm going to get this put back together properly, put the lid back on, and give it a bit of a soak test. But that's basically it. It's a tight squeeze in here, really. <laughs> Now as for this LED <laughs> connector that came off, you got LED minus, LED plus, hang on, are they using the red wire for the negative? Let's just check that. Bodge the meter leads in here. Yes they are. How sly is that? There we go. All good. Well, it's very lucky that the fault was the amp and not the driver itself, because this thing would cost a lot of money. But yeah, lucky. Because these things are known for eating these tweeters, the compression driver. Those go quite commonly, I understand. Let's not forget these cable ties. Those will be rattling all over the place. As you can hear, this is working fine now. We've got base and tops working. Brilliant. Catch you next time.